Welcome back. Well, Sam Burgess playing the NRL Grand Final with a broken oh, eye man. socket. Aaron Phillips being chaired off after doing an ACL in the AFLW Grand Final. Or Steve Smith oh, being struck by a vicious bouncer during the Ashes at Lords. When our favourite sports stars go down, the shock and dismay reverberates around the entire stadium. So, what if there was a way to see the reduction in the number of injuries in professional sports? You know, Richard Maloney is a mental health coach and industry expert, and he joins us now from Melbourne. Good to see you again, Richard. Thank you for joining us. Now, you say you can kind of predict when an athlete is going to be injured. Surely it's impossible to detect something like that. Well, good morning, Beck and Richard. Thanks for having me back. Uh, look, I guess the first thing I do when I work with a lead athlete is not really understand when they're going to get injured. It's more about understanding if they're going to get injured and if they're in a high risk zone of being injured and through their mental state. So to shed some light on this, go back 20 years ago when I was recruited to the St Kilda Football Club in the AFL, a kid that didn't have any injuries, the pressure surmounted, I started to break down, had a lot of head junk going on and then I started to assess what was going on in that stage. So now 20 years later, I've worked with hundreds of elite athletes associated with six elite sports teams and I started to uncover somewhat of a pattern, you could say, and then we've got quite a few case studies to prove that the mind really is connected to the body. So, Richard, there's, there's, you've unlocked this sort of link between stress and sports people getting the injuries. Um, what, what's the link? The, the well, more pressure they're under, the more injuries, or is that too simple? Well, it, it does align that way, and so stress is a normal part of life. And so some people manage it really well, some people not so well. An elite sports person has to endure a lot more of it. So science has now really proven that prolonged stress can really put you out of rhythm mentally, which then will put you out of rhythm uh, in the body as well. So, And that's not rocket science, but when that happens, I mean, you're going to lose your energy, your, your decision making's uh, obviously impaired, your immune system suffers, and there's a lot of side effects that we aren't really monitoring these days, which we've uncovered. So put it this way, an elite athlete is like a, a Formula One car. You know, when a Formula One car and the, the, the red light on the dashboard goes off, then they're quickly garaged. But with our elite athletes who are Formula One cars, sometimes we can't see when that red light is going off, and so we're building technology to, to assist in that area. Yeah. I see, exactly. The higher the stakes, the more the pressure, obviously. But how important or how much of a concern is social media in all of this landscape? I mean, because that's just a deluge, isn't it? Well, social media, I mean, when I work with the elite athletes, I work from about 12 years up, and... Uh, if they're in a, an aspiring elite athlete stage, I, I really recommend they don't get on it, but have an Instagram ac account maybe that's private. But most importantly, it's here to stay. I mean, uh, the media is more prevalent today than ever. So what are we doing as industry experts to actually advance our technology and, in, and our intellectual property to be one step ahead? And I guess that's, that's our focus. So, Richard, when you're seeing a footy star out there on the field or whatever and they, they suffer a, perhaps a season ending injury and mm -hmm. then you maybe just look into the background of what's been going on in their life the last 12 or 24 months. So are you saying that it doesn't surprise you that maybe they have been injured and there's a reason for that rather yeah. than just the physical? Great question. So what I do when I first get an elite athlete is I actually draw, we go through a timeline from the minute they started the sport to the current day. And then if you actually look at all the years they've gone through and when pressure is applied and their happiness level drops off, you can see a distinct link between the body suffering. And so it's quite, it's in the book itself, which is uh, injury free. But there is a link between the happiness in sport because self-doubt comes in, loss of confidence and all these things do obviously flow on into the body. So we've just seen that if you look at that timeline, uh, there's this sort of undeniable links between the pressure of the mind, which translates to sometimes time out of the game. I'm with you, Richard. I think that sounds like makes perfect sense to me. What do you think? And he's got it in the book there too. It's a great, important read for sports people. Richard, thank you for your time. Thank you, Richard. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it.